Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, like a book club for people who hate reading. This month we're doing grab bags, so I picked the movie Lethal Weapon, made in 1987. We do the TV show Powers by the PlayStation Channel, and we bring you movie news. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Hello. and Ryan Preston. <laughs> So here's the description of Lethal Weapon. A veteran cop, Murtaugh, is partnered with a young suicidal cop, Riggs, both having one thing in common, hating working in pairs. Now they must learn how to work with each other. Which is... I don't think they both hated working in pairs. <laughs> they hated each other. I don't even think they necessarily really hated each other. They just hated the idea of the other one. <laughs> my, yeah, my, it, was, it was it was pretty much a circumstantial sort of thing. I think in different circumstances, they would have been great friends right off the bat. Yeah, my, yeah, I agree. My favorite thing about the quadrilogy if you, is the, the fact through the whole thing. It's not a word. Murtaugh would say, "I'm too old for this shit." That was pretty much his tagline through the whole thing. Um, yes, yeah, right from the beginning. Yeah, I would say this is, if not the height, this is towards going to the top of uh, Mel Gibson's career. Oh, of and, his and, roles. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say. I mean, because I would say one... it, I would say it ended with possibly um, uh, the one who played the Scots guy, uh, Scotland guy, Braveheart. Braveheart. I think uh, it would top with Braveheart and really kind of went downhill. After I would that. say this is more of the character that Mel Gibson played that everybody enjoyed. Yes, um, the one where he was no holds barred, you know, tough guy. I'm gonna, if you're in my way, I'm gonna going through you. Um, I mean, that's why Payback was such a great film. And the the most amazing thing yeah, about this Payback was one trope after another that was that was great. Actually, if I can throw something in right here, the. Uh, um, Everybody always could sort of fondly remembers Mel Gibson in in Mad Max and and, yeah. and uh, Beyond Thunderdome and all that. The original oh. Mad Max or Road Warrior was really really specific, you know, to a to a crowd and to a time. And so I think people sort of fond. Ryan, actually was like, um, but this one sort of solidified him with American audiences at the time. Uh, yeah, and and really became like that guy. I mean, he was he was this guy until he sort of went off the deep end when he got all drunk and crazy. The the, the most amazing thing about this this movie is Mel Gibson is the actual true star in this movie, but he has more background and more story than anybody else, which is still for an '80s action movie, is a little more surprising. Because they they said he was. I mean, are you alluding to his wartime? Well, they did career more, they, that they kind of they, they talked to? about. They talked about his wife dying, which is a standard okay, '80s yep. trope. They talked about him Leave being some love interest dead. Yeah, they talked about how he was with that special project in Vietnam. So he was an amazing sniper of unparalleled ability. Um, minus the absolutely. But he couldn't shoot Gary Busey in between a door and a car. Right. Just I mean, putting that out there. With with Gary Busey's chicklets, you should be able to see him coming. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a reflection coming off that. <laughs> and so, and they with between like the backstory and how he acted, he was a pretty rich character, very defined. Unlike Danny Glover's character and Gary Busey a little bit, and the the general guy were the only characters that were a little bit more fleshed out than everybody else. Granted, they were the, the main story, but yeah, I was gonna say you kind of wrapped up everybody that was a player. Yeah, everybody that mattered, yeah. Yeah, except for the Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a testament to, uh, to, to how, how well the story was told. And, yeah, you know, um, I think uh, <clears throat> out of all the lethal weapons, this is the one that actually had the best um, writing. Because this one was the only one that actually fit the action crime thriller. The second one did a little bit, the third one was a comedy, and the fourth one was an abortion. Yeah. But pretty much sums it up. I don't know. I just kind of enjoyed the nostalgia of looking at the big ass bricks of cell phones for yes. you know your younger audience. You may be wondering why he's got one of those spin up phones from the war and World War Two. <laughs> That's not what it was. It was actually yeah, a cell what, phone. What took me back was the haircuts that uh, uh, yes. Murtaugh's kids had. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys did the same thing, but the scene where. Um, 
they're like, oh, go get the girl. But you kind of see this character off to the side with this really long hair that looks like the girl's hair. You're kind of thinking, she's already out of the car. And then you find out it's a dude. <laughs> you know, I don't think that really affected me as much as it did this time around. <laughs> of like, wow, that is a... That dude almost looks like he's put on as much makeup as the girl. To quote to <clears throat> quote the old guy, question everything. And then the other thing I wanted to point out was uh, maybe you crowd out there were kind of wondering why everybody in L.A. wasn't running around when these guys with fully automatic weapons were running down the street shooting. It was common. Guys, this was the late 80s, early 90s of L.A. This was what we called Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, th there was so much gang violence going on down there. If you ever heard of the Bloods and the Crips, this was their highlight. Well, all, all of the, the, the hood movies that take place in L.A., they didn't just base this shit off on nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's, and I'm about to say something I didn't think I would ever say. This actually pains me to say it. I love Gary Busey in this movie. He well, did... this is before Gary Busey went crazy. So you can you can love him and not <laughs> but, be weird. No, no, no. Gary Busey was always crazy. There was just very. He just went way over the top. I mean, between the motorcycle and the the drug use, um, <laughs> he he didn't fare too well. But his his character in this movie was surprisingly fitting to him. Yeah, I was. It's the... just that smile. He creeps you out. He's like that uncle you don't want your kids to near. He's like, I'm going to eat your face. You see these? These are chompers. <laughs> this that uncle are huge. that just really bums out every Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, his, his character in this was amazing. Um, like my favorite scene in this is the lighter scene. Oh. Um, <laughs> Hold that draw on, Joshua. Exactly. He's, you, he's, he, he looks like he's pretending not to smile as he's grimacing. And the, the whole time I was sitting and they're like, fuck, man, like, like, you know, he really is a soldier. Anybody else would be like, dude, it's Josh, man. My fucking mom calls me Joshua. <laughs> yeah. Well, that oh. guy was his wife. <laughs> Mr. Joshua. <laughs> um, I list, this movie is just always made me laugh. And I love the other part I love is with the what, what was the scene there in the shooting range and talking about how the hooker died? Oh, and yeah. it said this yeah, plot that, was that's thin. A, that's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, and, that's kind of thin with your wife's cooking. What was that? Never mind. I just like the fact that Mel Gibson was calling a full metal jacket 40, or 9 millimeter around a hollow point. <laughs> yes. There's did, a, did you like that one too, Ryan? I didn't notice it wasn't a hollow point. <laughs> yeah, it was a full metal jacket. Wait, wait until you get with to the hollow point. Wait till you get to the third one. The third one's the one with the cop killer bullets. It's even more oh, amusing. That's, I mean, yeah, that, that's the right one. Did, did that bother you, you, John? See, okay, did you back when that, this movie you just was be like, really? That. Honestly, since this is the 80s, this is kind of, it doesn't bother me you much. You just cause, overlooked it? <laughs> yeah, because it's pretty much, you know, this is when um, guns had unlimited magazine and insta -gibs, So it's kind of yeah, like... I was wondering why he was exactly. putting up to his temple right in between both of his lobes. I'm like, dude, that's not going to do anything except for give you a slow... I, I mean, you hope the ambulance doesn't arrive in two days because you're still going to be alive. Yeah, yeah this, is, well, this is this is the problem, you know, with, with, with Google. I mean, every everybody writing a movie sort of had to step up their game because we all sort of had this this knowledge as, as ubiquitous now. As, uh, I knew oh, it wait, back in 87. <laughs> I was five. I, you know, and I knew the better than this shit. Sorry. Well, that's because you grew up around you rednecks. <laughs> bikers. Same thing. Bikers and roofers. I, I'm not quite sure if bikers and rednecks go in the same, but I, I'll, I'll argue the finer points of motorcycle, like one percenters or not. Well, later. okay. Not, not all bikers are rednecks, but all rednecks are bikers. He's got you there. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> Especially if you're talking about in the movie universe. You're um, right. Do you know what, the one thing I think about it surprised me about this movie is how much is really fleshing out Mel Gibson's character. I would say a quarter of this movie or more is solely trying to base Mel Gibson's character is a guy who's on the the bloody edge. Well, and and not in a boring way either. I mean, they they sort of trickled in his backstory gingerly <laughs> enough throughout the throughout the time that you were you were into the of what happened to him and, and 
and and all his backstory stuff and especially when he's like that's a special forces tattoo and and you're like oh i'm getting these little glimpses yeah yeah oh and the, still just blowing shit up, you know i would also say the facial expressions which is not something i think he used a whole lot later in his career but his facial expressions kind of showing how crazy he was to me was in a with a really well done touch where he'd start twitching or you know yeah later in his career he just got paid to look mean <laughs> and, and blame the British for everything. Yeah, I mean, he it just did that, that little, like, like that scowl, like that lip turned up, just kind of growl at people and two million dollars. <laughs> um, there's it's really hard to say anything bad about this movie. I mean, besides the fact it's the 80s and anything revolving firearms is completely off base. But, but, but I mean, but really, other than than the like the most forgivable of, of Hollywood transgresses, you know the uh, the bullets and things, you know it's a really good movie. No, totally. And I it's, mean it's a really good movie. Oh, you know, it didn't beat you over the head with the eighties either. So you know it really stands up to the test of time. And it's surprisingly well thought out. Something that they didn't carry through in the other ones. Like the other three well, are not well thought. It wasn't beaten to death at the time either. You know. True. Um, I'm trying to think if the, the other characters, I mean, this is really the movie that really kind of made me fall in, in love with Mel Gibson as an actor. That and Payback. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> just because Payback was the movie you want to see make where he just starts randomly killing people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, randomly. Yeah, payback was just a fun, you know, for, Reven for, for fun ride for sick bastards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's still probably one of my all-time favorite Mel Gibson films is Payback. I mean, sure. it, the plot is just so straightforward. You really can't go wrong with it. Yeah, it's about as thin as three, two beers, so. It's not thin. It's just, it's just here's the plot. This is what we're doing. <laughs> Sit yeah. down and relax. <laughs> and, and we'll see, that's, that's some of my favorite movies are just the simple, like, here's a, here's a guy who wants his $73,000 back. Yeah, I, don't I, give him any more than that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I would say about this movie is it's surprisingly, I mean, honestly, it's the 80s, but it's surprisingly linear, even for an 80s action movie. That's, It's very kind of, here's a setup, here's a delivery, here's a setup, here's a delivery. Yeah. You well, know? Yeah, and you know what was great about it, too, is they didn't get so overly comp. Nowadays, I mean, every movie has to have four or five turns. This one, they set up the bad guy. The bad guy had a motive. They went and stopped the bad guy. Yeah. You know? I, I do think it also helped because of the, the time it was made. Being so close to the Vietnam War, I think you didn't need a whole lot of uh, plot twists and plot motiva uh, motivators that to to really uh, tell the story. The, he's, the guy is a, a soldier, and I, I thought that was the perfect way to motivate the story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there needed to be a lot to motivate this story. I think, uh, I mean, like you've said, is that there there's a lot of backstory that they go into, you know, here and there throughout. But, I mean, as far as the plot motivators, I didn't think it needed to be that big of a deal. I mean, the heroine and the way they played it off was, I thought it was really well done. Yeah. As far as what, you know, what they were doing for the time. Oh, the, the other funny moments. I love the description of the 80s man. I cried last night. I'm oh, an 80s yeah. man. Um, Was anybody there with you? <laughs> you, you know what the, the most... What? I think the surprising thing is they didn't go in a lot into Murtaugh's background. He kind of stayed the same character throughout. You learned a bit, a little about his family, but none of his other, uh, none of his, none of his other partners. Because if this well, was yeah, made today... You knew what you needed to know about Murtaugh. Well, yeah. You know, Murtaugh wasn't a mystery to anybody. He's the family man who is just about to retire and then meets this crazy asshole. He was supposed to be the relatable guy. Yeah. Which know? is, which is amazing. He's going to retire in two days. What to me is amazing because if they made this movie today, they'd have to have some ridiculous, fleshed out backstory about something happened. And Well, you know, in, the, in the today's movie, they'd start out with a 20 minute scene of him in Vietnam, you know, <laughs> doing the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life, cut to him with a suit at a cop station yeah um god i'm not looking forward to them rebooting this series yeah because i think they're making it a tv series yes they are oh. this year you know what but if it's an hbo series i'll totally watch the crap out I'm of still it still kind of upset that they're doing that they have lethal weapon the one coming out now in front of the lethal weapon 1987 don't you think that's a little back-ass backwards <laughs> just putting that out there i mean 
I, they're, re, they're remaking MacGyver, so uh, the 80s is new again. Um, What's that guy's name? Dude, they, they remade Richard Rush Dean Hour as a TV show. Do you guys watch that piece of shit? What? The Rush Hour? Yeah, Rush no. Hour. The one with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. No. They, Wait, they did it as a TV show. I know. And didn't they do Bulletproof too? No fucking way. The wow. one with, with, with Adam Sandler? Yeah. Wow, wow. Either they're uh, rebooting the actual um, what, 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 say TV this? series, or not the TV series, the movie, or So let's something. let's let's save this for movie news. <laughs> I I give this a four to five, mainly because I actually really, this is one of my all-time favorite movies. I can't quite give it a five out of five, but I've... I've watched this movie so much. I actually almost I almost know the plot and all the lines by heart. Um, so this is a four to five. I mean, this to me this was better than Die Hard just by a little bit. Well, to me, Die Hard in this movie sort of fall under slightly different categories. This is a five out of five, even if on accident. You know, this is the quintessential buddy cop movie. Every movie that has two cops in it who don't like each other is just trying to make this movie. Jeez. Wait. Do- what about Turner and Hooch? Oh. You screw that fucking what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> With the dog? <laughs> oh. oh, what does an aneurysm feel like? So what like, you, what's going on now in your brain? Oh, I stopped asking that question years ago. Your answers scare me. So what what rating do you give this movie, Hooch? Uh, you know, I mean, for action film, this one isn't the pinnacle for me, but it, it is quite up there. Um like I said, I mean, for me, the action is the pinnacle of payback of it, just how straightforward it is. No real bull crap, just cut right through it. Um, but this one is a four out of five for me. And so, just now, don't ask me my rating on Turner and Hooch. Oh, that's can can we just <laughs> never to be quiet? Can we just never do that movie, please? I I want to kind of block that movie out of my life. Um, so we're switching the TV show and Joe James. You're up. <laughs> Joe. Yep, Joe. 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 Joan Rivers is here. <laughs> her ghost anyway um so this one is a playstation film or tv series that they put out um called powers um i just kind of ran across it just randomly uh, you there you ryan know, just stuff yeah um so ryan did you watch this one uh yeah i did uh, okay wait, so hold on wait, i, I want to jump wait, into this wait, wait, first hold on, hold on hold on i'm proud of you ryan <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean does he get a gold star now <laughs> he should um, so I want to jump into this one Somebody real quick. Somebody smoke them out. Is this one, there were parts in the opening, like, 10, 15 minutes where I thought about stopping. But there was enough in there for me to be like, okay, you know what, I, I'm curious enough to see how, what what route they take this. I mean, Ryan, did you kind of feel the same way? Um, I... The whole time I'm watching it, there was a couple of things that kind of kept me going. They they, they teased a couple of things. Um, the one thing that really stood out, which really wasn't much, was I was just wondering what his relationship uh, between him and his uh, partner's wife was. Oh, okay. Because that's the only part that they didn't – that they just hinted a little bit towards. Yeah, they glossed Everything over it. Everything else was really spelled out. I mean I understand it's a pilot, but I've never seen worse chemistry. Yeah. You know, between the actors, I think that's what was bugging me the most. Yeah, I did think the acting was really um, not really great. It was just flat. They were playing <laughs> yeah. it so dry. I mean, with all the space for for actual good, funny moments or realistic moments, it this, was just yeah. so fucking serious. Yeah. yeah, this 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 TV show is totally seemed like a combination between Heroes and the X Men. A it bit. Was here with a couple of cuss words is kind of yeah. how I was looking at. It. And according to this, this did two seasons and 13 episodes, so this wasn't a very long series. Well, it's it's still going. This started last year. Hmm. So it's only got two seasons going well, I, right I now. I think, uh, obviously, with, when it comes to these things, and I tell me if you think I'm wrong, when it comes to, to, to things like Netflix or or, so, or Sony, uh, what do you call it? Um, or PlayStation. Amazon movies or you know putting out uh, community and stuff like that, you can't really base it on on rating so much anymore only because it doesn't cost so much to distribute it like it yeah. used to, you know, I, so you can keep it on Netflix in perpetuity or on like Sony for fucking ever. Jerks. I think, and, they're, and keep, sorry, I was going to say, I think they're going to base this basis on, 
I think they would base this on plays and kind of what the eat the you know the atmosphere and everybody on the internet kind of say about it. Yeah, I think that's one reason there's certain characters or certain movies or TV shows not around anymore on that were Netflix only. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, what's actually kind of cool about it, and sort of the point that I was getting to, is whether or not I like the show or not, and I'm not necessarily a fan, by the way. Um, it can stay on, and it can actually try to find its footing. Yeah, you know, and and who knows, like like a few episodes in, it might have found its footing, whereas otherwise it would have been canceled on network. Yeah, kind of like so what it's good Fox that these did. kinds of little shows are getting a shot to just tell a story. I think that's the best thing now about. I mean, this is a tad bit of a sidebar, but I think that's the best thing about Netflix and Amazon is shows that would, like you said, would never have a giant run, like say Firefly, for example, would have been a huge hit. They would have had like six seasons, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned on this one, I might give it maybe two more episodes at the most. I mean, the thing that I was saying about it is, like, I could see this one kind of being like a, a like Ryan said, you know, more of a, like a grown-up version of Heroes where, I mean, it has the potential to go places, but with how bad the acting is on the main characters, I, I just... I I mean, See, I don't know if I'd even say it's a, gr a, a grown-up version of Heroes. Well, I mean, like, they're cussing and they're killing people. Well, right? I, I, I would say grown-up of Heroes. I just said Heroes where they cussed a couple of times. Yeah. See, I would say it was Heroes, but slightly touched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. This is the Down Syndrome version of Heroes <laughs> wow. for you people Let's out there. Let's not insult our, our brothers and sisters out there with Down Syndrome. If I you just have brothers said and sisters that I haven't met yet? I mean, you know, like sort of the royal brothers and sisters. I, I just said slightly touched. James is the one who put it over the top there, as always. I was just saying what you, what you were. full retard. Yeah, don't go full retard, people out there. It doesn't go well. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so, ladies and gentlemen. Stop it now. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen, do you hate us, love us? Make sure you go to our Facebook page and tell us. Matter of fact, if there's a, mo if there's a movie or a TV <laughs> series you'd love us to do, holy crap, please let us know. Also, we do now have an audio podcast available at Podbean, Stitcher, and more. Make sure you give us a listen. Sure, why not? Oh, jeez. Yeah, put Jesus. us in your head. God help you. <laughs> I promise we'll only haunt your nightmares. I'll make you laugh. <laughs> we will <laughs> not make your drive time go any faster. <laughs> well, maybe off a cliff. <laughs> Yeah, Matter of fact, listen to the listen to our Das Boot episode. You'll understand what it means by being Das Booted. Um, listen to us while you work out and make a deal with yourself that you can't stop listening until you do like an hour on an elliptical. <laughs> do we have an? Uh, we do have an hour long show. So somewhere. <laughs> uh, so I so I found an article for as movie news that I thought was slightly fascinating. Cuba Gooden Jr. Uh, re uh, reveals why he passed away on so many amazing roles and went to a lot of crappy direct-to-video roles. He says he was waiting for the perfect role. Wait, his name is Cuba Gooden? That's what I was kind of thinking. Gooden? Cuba Gooden Jr. <laughs> oh, jeez. Eh, I butchered it. I'm okay with that. It's like he's <laughs> going to find a little saying it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> great. Thanks a lot. Now we're going to get more comments. <laughs> That's not nice. That's butcha. <laughs> jeez. Um, and... They're still talking about Channing Tatum playing Gambit on X Men. Um, I've the couple of movie news the stories talk about. Oh, it's being delayed again, and I actually want to watch a Gambit movie, especially if it's what we've talked about, but not with him. Assassins and Thieves. Anybody Deeves. think that dude can actually pull off a New Orleans accent? No, no, um, not at all. I don't think you speak English. <laughs> he definitely can't act with it. Maybe you should try pantomiming. I mean, dude, I, I, I'm not I'm not a hater. I mean, I fucking I loved it in 21 Jump Street. I thought that movie was hysterical. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it the, the Louisiana, New Orleans, the, man, I think that's, but he it was, feels like that's over his head. I don't know. Well, he Why was don't 20, they do the guy from, um, do you remember the, the serial killer guy from True Blood? Uh, yeah. Why don't they have him play Gambit? But Gambit was more like Creole too, right? Because he had the French. Yeah, but that guy could do it. That guy can nail those nail no, those accents. I mean, that's, no, I mean that's for... nail on the head a little bit too much. I mean, I can definitely see him trying. Oh, to he's go, too good uh, for the role. <laughs> it is Gambit, after all. Nobody wants to really see a Gambit movie. Um, <laughs> as long as they don't pick the guy they did last time. 
I mean, see, to me, it's, it's funny Gambit? that they don't go with more, you know, sort of sort of bringing people up from obscurity <clears throat> a little bit. You know, the people who've done a few things kind of proven themselves of an actor. And then, because obviously, look, these characters have stood the test of time already. I mean, people are going to watch a Gambit movie no matter who's in it. You, you know, Channing Tatum isn't going to sell the fat movie Gambit. Is. You just reminded True. me. The last guy who played Gambit reminded me of uh, Mr. Glass from Unbreakable. Oh, jeez. Samuel Jackson? That was like the worst movie you ever did, dude. That, right that, up there are Snakes on the Plane and... No, Snakes God, on the Plane... Too many roles. Snakes on a Plane, he wanted a new car. There was a payday involved in that movie. Oh, for sure. I mean, on, there's no way anybody else would ever do oh, that Oh, Formula movie. 51. That's the other one I was trying to think oh, of. Oh, that movie was... So bad. <laughs> you you want to see that guy in his skirt? Um, he said keep the breezes down. <clears throat> Whew. Uh, jeez. So, what do you guys think about a newer Harry Potter movie? So, there's a newer movie coming out, and they're talking about. We're not even there yet. It's Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I mean, are we supposed to do like twenty years, fifteen years in between? <laughs> I mean, isn't there like like a limit out there, Hollywood? I mean, Jesus. Well, she did write a book, so I'm, but I'm pretty sure they're like, hey, we, we need ideas. Well, Let's give her more money. I mean, isn't that what the the Beast movie is? The Mystical Beast or whatever the hell that is coming out? Beast? Yeah, there's some uh, uh, Harry Potter universe type um, type film coming out. Oh, jeez. Um, what is it? The Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Him. I think this is what this is about. I, I think, I'm assuming that's this is within that book. Well, it's the, the Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Him is in the universe. I'm assuming that's oh. what that is, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a legit kind of reboot on a new Harry Potter character going to Hogwarts. Well, see, no, this one, if, if uh, reading the news, it's about, like, the American magic schools, and it has Draco as an adult. Maybe. So, so, I, maybe, yeah, I'd be down with that. I don't know. I mean, I don't I know. I like Harry Potter's. I don't know. It seems a little, a little kind of new to do the uh, the the new school already. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with it too. I mean, I think it was a pretty amazing universe that we yeah. that was created, and not to mention Disney. I mean, wait a second, not Disney. Uh, where's the uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter? The WB. Is it was it really Warner Brothers? Yeah, I didn't remember that. That's Warner Brothers, so guys. Is it, is it Six Flags that they Universal have Studios? There? Yes, it's in Universal oh. Studios. Okay. Yeah, so, so God, I mean, Ryan, they, they you live there. Kind of funny into that kind of thing. So I mean, of course they're going to keep making the properties. Yeah, I mean, I, I like uh, Ryan was saying. I enjoy that universe as well. I mean, I was kind of happy they were doing Fantastic Beast and where to find them, and but to do a kind of reboot of the whole schooling system. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I, don't I mean, think are they're going like, to have a character like Harry Potter in it. Well, this isn't technically... Yeah, this is the kind of thing they would turn into a Saturday morning cartoon. You know, like the Jackie Chan Adventures, you know? Yeah. Well, well, technically, this isn't a, a reboot. It's basically an extended of the series, because huh. Hogwarts was destroyed, not the other magic schools. And if you listen, if you watch the movies and read the book, they did tell you there were magic schools all over the world. Yeah, they did. I mean, they brought in people from, you know, different areas for the... The game. Uh, Goblet of Fire. Yeah. Um, so this, this is basically... Um, the Los Angeles version of Walking Dead. Yeah, that's what so. it seems like to me. Hopefully it's better acted. I don't know. I kind of like Fear of the Walking Dead. It's kind of an interesting take uh, on it. So do any of you guys like Daniel Day-Lewis? Fuck yeah. Yeah. So according to this, he's going to come out of the come out for Deep Freeze by Paul Thomas Anderson. Deep Freeze? Yeah, basically, they say he's going to come out of retirement because he basically he said, retired? after the Lincoln movie, they basically said, I'm done for a while. I still think he would have made a great, you know, uh, Doctor Strange. I just want, I just want to see it. Yeah. Off, I just want to see when it's not filming, when he's demanding everybody call him the Sorcerer Supreme. That's one of the reasons. I, that's one of the reasons <laughs> I love this guy. I just want to say, I am the Sorcerer Supreme. Um, would you like fries with that, sir? You know, I would pay to see that. But I mean, I'm. I like Daniel Day Lewis. I think he's a great actor. Um, I think we did. Uh, there will be blood, and I think even that one he did a fantastic role. Yes. In. Well, and not to mention, uh, there will be blood was Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah. So I mean, it totally makes sense that that he would come out of retirement, or so to speak, you know, for 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 PTA man, because that yeah. movie was so effing good. Yeah. I see. I. Uh... 
I, I like him, but I don't at the same time. But his, I, I don't know why. It's really hard Daniel to say. Daniel Day or? Yeah. Okay. Daniel Day Lewis. His is he's an amazing actor. All the movies I like, maybe that's why I hate him because some of the characters are jerks. Because he well, plays them well, so well. Him, him and Paul Thomas Anderson, because Paul Thomas Anderson, Anderson makes some incredibly unique movies. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, James, what's your opinion of Punch Drunk Love? Actually, Do you remember that flick? Yeah, but that's one on my list that I never got around to. Okay, well, yeah, it's, I didn't uh, watch it's that one. incredibly unique. Uh, if, if, if you get around to watch it, I'm, I'm interested in your opinion on that one. And the the last bit of movie news before we, we talk about next week's uh, show is Bill Skarsgård is cast as the iconic Pennywise the cr- uh, Clown in the new Stephen King's It. Nice. That'll be interesting. So what do you think? Does it have you wanting to see it more than than before it doesn't add or detract any reason that i wanted to see it i so wanted to see it because i enjoyed the film i mean so you're more neutral about it yeah. you're going to see it because you like the original yeah and ryan's going to see it because it gave him dreams <laughs> he lots hates and lots of dreams he hates clowns isn't that right yeah, ryan I and can, i can i can face the uh, the fear of clowns without an issue it's it's the the bees now this uh, i have an irrational fear of bees it's freaking weird <laughs> Like African bees, like killer bees, or just bees? I mean, might as well be, you know, it's fucking retarded. Okay, he hates honey, he starts breaking out in hives. Um, <laughs> so what's I was watching the thing on how honey was made and freaking out that the guy wasn't wearing gloves. <laughs> you idiot, you idiot. Do you know what you could do to the honey? <laughs> it's contamination. Oh, wait, no, that's not what you were saying, was it? No, that's not what I was saying. <laughs> So next week is James's pick, but first we should talk about what TV series we're doing. And James, all right. So um, I'm doing one of these uh, classic films or TV series. We're gonna go jump back in uh, 2001 and go watch Six Feet Under. Oh wow! Which episode? The first pilot? episode. Yeah, okay. The first episode. Hell yeah! It, pilot episode of that fucking show. Yeah. Is so good. And then we're also going to do a little bit of a jump back 10 years before that and go to the 1995 movie called Kids. Oh, jeez. Seriously? Yep. (laughs) I haven't seen this movie since 1996. (laughs) Yeah, this is this is one of those movies that was like like reportedly like passed around in a brown paper bag you know between like junior high kids yep <laughs> yes so <laughs> okay. yeah oh wow i haven't seen i haven't thought about this movie so, so long everyone's so, oh man you every, know what's sad is i probably i've seen this movie like once i probably remember once? every scene of it dude i've seen this movie that's, that, a, that's a movie that sticks with you yeah more than once <laughs> yeah you this, only really do need to see it once, guys. This is a movie that you quote that you'll quote randomly, and you think, "Oh crap, it's from kids." I haven't thought about that movie in a long time, and then you start talking about it, and we then you realize save this for next week, guys. Yes. And so, jeez, oh, and so, I gave, oh damn, I, I'm kind of like, wow, really? So yep. I gave Lethal Weapon a four to five. James gave it a four to five. Ryan gave it a five out of five. We gave the PlayStation Network TV series yeah. Powers a give it a chance, yeah. a yeah. watch. Yeah, a go man. ahead and watch the first not, one. Not make... me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, see you next week. <laughs> Thank you.